square root of x plus y equals 7, and x plus square root of y is 11, where x and y are positive integers. At first glance, the equation might look simple, but don't be fooled. This isn't just a school-level math puzzle because this was asked by one of the legendary Indian mathematicians of all time, Srinivasa Ramanujan. Now, if you try to directly solve it using trial and error, you might get stuck or even miss the beauty hidden inside. But there's a very clever trick here, and it lies in treating both equations together, not separately. Now look, from here you might say the root of x is 7 minus y. So squaring both sides will give us x equals 7 minus y, whole square, right? Now, if you substitute the value of x as this, in this equation, you will get this. Then expand this using a minus b whole square formula to get this. Now, here comes the part which is scarier than the Conjuring movies altogether. You might think take this square root of y as some variable r. So, y becomes r square. And squaring it one more time gives y square as r raised to power 4. Substitute all three of them here to get 49 minus 14r square plus r to the 4 plus r equals 11, or rearrange properly to get this quartic equation. And yes, this is where the nightmares begin. We don't even know how to solve a cubic equation properly. How can we even dare to solve a quartic equation? So now we will use a clever trick here. Let us assume the square root of x as p and the square root of y as q. So x becomes p square and y becomes q square. Now rewrite the original equations using them. We get p plus q square equals 7 and p square plus q equals 11. Now it feels so relaxed when the square roots are all gone. Next, we can rewrite this 11 as 7 plus 4, right? Oh, wait, actually this expression is equal to 7, and thus we can write here p plus q square instead of 7, right? Now take both p and q square on the left side of this equation. We get p square plus q minus p minus q. Square equals 4. Now we group them properly. Write this p square and minus q square together. Now look here. Minus of p minus q. When expanded becomes minus p. And this minus of minus q becomes plus q. Or this becomes q minus p. So we can rewrite this part as minus of p minus q. And that equals 4. Wow. Can you also notice the same thing that I can see? Yes, this thing is the same as the difference of square term, and we can rewrite it as p minus q times p plus q, can't we? Whoa, man, now we can take p minus q as common from them to get p minus q times p plus q minus 1 equals 4. Now we can factorize this 4 in three different ways, right? 1 times 4, then 2 times 2, and 4 times 1. So consider this part. Here in this product, this is an integer, and this is also an integer since x and y are integers. So we get p minus q equals 1, and p plus q minus 1 equals 4, or p plus q equals 5. Add both of them to get 2 times p equals 6, or p equals 3. And from here, we get q equals 2. This means x is 3 square or 9, and y is 2 square or 4. Great! Then consider this part where both p minus q and p plus q minus 1 are 2. This makes p plus q equals 3. Add both of them to get 2 times p equals 5, or p equals 5 by 2, which is not possible because x is a positive integer. Now consider the third case where p minus q is 4 and p plus q minus 1 is 1. This makes p plus q equals 2. Add both of them to get 2 times p equals 6, or p equals 3, which means x is 3 square or 9. But now q equals minus 1, or square root of y, 
is minus 1, which is again not possible. So we reject this solution as well. And finally, we have this as our final answer. Like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye.